Here's a little video review of my guide to torque. These are the chapter notes. Perhaps you have heard of a torque wrench for tightening nuts and bolts in cars. Or maybe you've read advertisements for pickup trucks where they try to impress you with some huge amount of torque. What is torque exactly? Maybe the best way to understand torque is to feel it. Well, you guys have a meter stick. You can hang a weight from it, hold it in your hand. You're gonna move that weight further out. The weight as it moves out produces more torque one way and your hand has to stop that with torque the other way. And you can feel that. The further the distance, the greater the torque. I think you can see that these notes are pretty easy to read and you can try these demos right at home with the equipment you have. Of course, here's our torque lab. And this goes over all the details. I have a, home, a special home version that just uses a pencil and a ruler and you could put pennies on it and do the lab with really simple equipment. And people always ask me, do you have any uh, worksheets with uh, examples worked out? Well, here it is. Uh, here's example one. And you can certainly try this problem and then cover up the work. Don't look at it until you try it. And so here's example two. Here's another demo you can do. Here's the ruler. You put some pennies on here and it's going right through the pivot. It's gonna be perfectly balanced. You won't have to push down. But as you move these pennies further and further out, you're gonna have more and more torque and you're gonna to have to push harder and you'll feel that. And here's our second torque lab where we had three different weights. And here's another example. Here's a discussion about translational and rotational equilibrium. Here's an example where we put the weight on one side, the pivot to one side, and you gotta calculate the weight of the meter stick, just like in our lab. Here's a conversation about torque being produced by the center of mass. And there's the diagrams to go with it. When the weight of the center of mass is to the left of the pivot, it's gonna fall this way. To the right of the center of mass, it's gonna fall the other way. Well, hey, if it's right over the pivot, it's not gonna go anywhere, and the torque is zero. If a force goes through the pivot, it doesn't produce any torque. And we've seen these demos in my videos. You can try to set this up yourself. Here's a weight on one end of the meter stick. Try to put your finger there and get it to balance you'll find out that the center of mass is close to the heavy end. Well, now what happens if I have a heavy object and a light object, and the center of mass is closer to the heavy object, they're attached by a string, and I throw it across the room. So this is the path of the center of mass. I did some demos on stability. There's a separate video on that now. If the center of mass is between the base here, it's gonna be stable. And if I tip it over so that the center of mass misses the pivot on the outside, it's going to cause it to fall over. Well, that's unstable. The Leaning Tower of Soda. Uh, that's on my video, too. You can watch that one. It's a lot of fun for you to try at home. Now, example five is a classic. You've got to read this. We have a 10-foot-long board resting across two step ladders. A painter is standing three feet from the left end. Now, I'm not going to go through the whole solution because it's right here. Example six is where would you put your finger to make this balance? We've done plenty of these in class. It's the same thing as saying, where's the center of mass? Finding the center of mass in two dimensions. Wherever the pivot is, you draw a vertical line, and then you see that the center of mass has to be somewhere along that. If you can get it to balance by rotating the whole diagram, imagine standing this thing up on its end and balancing it on here. Then you draw another line up from there. The intersection is the center of mass. In number seven, all we're doing is saying, get an estimate of where that center of mass is. We have a sheet of plywood. Let's say we cut it out. Well, now the center of mass has to be shifted. It used to be right in the middle. Where do you think it's going to be? You think about that. In the next paragraph, there's a discussion about it. Well, now we get serious with some numbers in finding the center of mass in two dimensions. So you, again, you can picture balancing it this way and then rotating the diagram and trying to balance it that way. The intersection is where the center of mass is. Well, now what do you do if you have a rod and you have a force at an angle? I think everybody knows you're going to have to break this up into two components. <clears throat> what component produces the torque? Well, this force passes right through the pivot. So it must be this force. That's perpendicular to the distance. And that's all discussed here in the chapter notes. Example seven is all about that torque lab we did when we had the string pulling on the meter stick at an angle. And here's the lab from today. How are we going to solve this problem? We need to know how much tension is in that rope. 
Well, that's what I went over in class, so now you can try this practice problem. We even cover the rectangular objects in these chapter notes. So imagine you have a block like this mounted on a pivot, and I was going to push this way. That's going to produce counterclockwise torque. The weight will produce clockwise torque. This problem always causes kids to have some trouble. They have a tough time seeing what distance goes with what force. We can see that the weight misses the pivot by this distance, which would be half of L. This force up here, pushing, goes across, and that misses the pivot by that distance, the entire H. Well, let's ask ourselves, what kind of equilibrium are these objects in? In example A, this force would cancel that force, and the net force would be zero, so it's not going to go anywhere. That would be translational equilibrium. It's also not going to rotate because it's not producing any torque. Now, what about B? Can you see how that force would make this object want to rotate in a clockwise direction? This force would make it want to rotate also in a clockwise direction. If that's the center of mass, this thing's just going to sit there and spin. The net force is still zero. They're going to cancel each other out. In other words, it's in translational equilibrium, but not in rotational equilibrium. This thing's going to go faster and faster and faster. And lastly, we finished with uh, an example about a torque wrench. So besides all the videos, you can also go to the torque examples PDF. And you're going to see tons of examples work out here. Page after page of examples that you've seen me do in class. This is what we're talking about in lab today. Um, here's a two-dimensional center of mass problem. Um, somebody sitting on the edge of a table problem. And then here's more problems that don't have the solutions, but we have an answer key to. You got to try them on your own. So there's a whole sheet of diagrams that go with these problems. And each one is numbered. And the answer key is right here. So give that a shot. OK, kids? Number 11, we already told you, is supposed to be 8.4, not 80.4.